Confidence is one of the essential pillars for success in any aspect of life. But what happens when we start undermining it with negative habits, often without even realizing it? Today, I'm going to reveal the nine most common habits that might be slowly eroding your self-confidence, and more importantly, how you can reverse this using Stoic philosophy principles. Could any of these habits be present in your life, sabotaging your potential without you even knowing it? If so, this video might bring the clarity you need to regain your confidence. Let's get straight to the point and discover together which of these harmful habits are affecting you and how to fight them. First habit, excessive procrastination. It's like a shadow that follows us, often without us noticing. Have you ever felt stuck in an endless cycle of postponing things? Tasks pile up, and suddenly that small chore turns into an impossible mountain to climb. Procrastination traps us in a state of paralysis, where even the simple act of starting seems like an enormous challenge. But the issue isn't just the task left undone, it's the silent impact this has on our confidence. When we procrastinate, we're not just delaying an action, we're postponing the opportunity to prove to ourselves that we're capable. Every time we choose not to act, we reinforce an internal narrative of failure. It's as if by putting off a task, we're telling ourselves, I can't do it. And that phrase, repeated mentally, starts to echo into other areas of our lives. What was once just a small delay now spreads like a stain, affecting our self-confidence and creating a sense of helplessness. Procrastination is sneaky because at first glance it seems harmless. I'll do it tomorrow, you think. But that tomorrow never comes. And when it finally does, you're already so overwhelmed by the accumulated anxiety that the task seems even scarier than before. It's like pushing a snowball downhill. It only gets bigger, heavier, and harder to control. Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, reminds us, you must perform each act of your life as if it were your last. He talks about the urgency of living in the present moment, of not postponing what's important. When we procrastinate, we stray from this principle, setting aside not just tasks, but our own integrity. Now think about the times you've procrastinated. How did you feel afterward? Maybe a brief moment of relief, but soon replaced by frustration. Procrastination doesn't just prevent things from getting done, it also destroys the way you see yourself. The feeling of, I'm not capable, starts to surface more and more. You begin to question your own ability. Why can't I ever finish anything? Or, am I really that incompetent? These thoughts are harsh and often baseless. Yet when repeated constantly, you start to believe them. It's like a small crack in a mirror that over time spreads, completely distorting the reflection. Imagine you have a plant at home, and this plant represents your self-confidence. Every time you procrastinate, it's like you're neglecting to water that plant. At first, it might seem strong, but over time, it starts to wilt. The leaves fall, and the vibrant shine that was once there disappears. That's how it is with your self-confidence. The more you procrastinate, the weaker it becomes, and the reflection you see in the mirror becomes more distorted. Epictetus teaches us that it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it. Procrastination is a reaction. It comes from fear, anxiety, and a feeling of inadequacy. But this reaction doesn't define who you are, and that's where the opportunity for change comes in. How can you break free from this cycle of procrastination and rebuild your confidence? Stoicism offers some practical answers. One of them is the principle of starting small. When we think of big tasks, our brain quickly feels overwhelmed. It's like looking at the top of a mountain and wondering how you'll ever get there. But if you focus only on the next step, the journey becomes more manageable. The concept of starting small is simple but powerful. Instead of focusing on the whole task, focus on a small part of it. If you need to write a 10-page report, start with a paragraph. If you need to clean the house, start by tidying up one corner. By completing these small steps, you begin to feel a sense of progress, and with that, your confidence starts to be restored. It's like watering that wilting plant. Slowly, the leaves begin to lift, and the green starts to shine again. Another stoic strategy is to stay focused on the present. Often we procrastinate because we're caught up in thoughts about the future. What if I fail? Or, what if it's not perfect? These thoughts are illusions 
distractions that prevent us from acting. When we focus on the present, the pressure of the future fades away. Seneca reminds us, the main part of life slips away while you're busy making plans for the future. To put this into practice, when you feel the urge to procrastinate, ask yourself, what can I do right now? It can be something small, but by acting in the present, you start to build a sense of control over your own life. Stoicism teaches us that we can't control everything, but we can control our actions. And by controlling our actions, we start to shape our destiny. Procrastination, though it seems like a harmless habit, has a deep impact on our confidence and how we view ourselves. By delaying tasks, we're actually delaying the opportunity to prove to ourselves that we're capable. However, with a stoic approach, it's possible to break free from this cycle. Starting small and focusing on the present are practical tools that can help you act instead of delaying. And remember Marcus Aurelius's words, each action should be done as if it were your last. There's no time to waste, and rebuilding your confidence starts now with the next small step you choose to take. By adopting these practices, you'll not only free yourself from procrastination, but also start to water your self-confidence again, allowing it to grow strong and vibrant. After all, it's through action that we rediscover our inner strength and prove to ourselves that we're capable of achieving much more than we ever imagined. Second habit, constant comparison with others. It's a silent but powerful trap. It can start innocently, almost imperceptibly, but over time, it transforms into a cycle of self-sabotage. You look at someone else's life, and suddenly, your own life seems dull and lackluster. What was once a peaceful journey turns into an obstacle course where other people's standards and expectations define your worth and consequently, your confidence. Comparing yourself to others is a sure recipe for dissatisfaction. This is because we're always measuring ourselves with a yardstick that wasn't made for us. Imagine a bird trying to swim like a fish, or a fish trying to fly like a bird. It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Yet that's exactly what we do when we compare ourselves. We measure ourselves by skills, achievements, and lifestyles that aren't ours, forgetting that each of us has our own path, with our own challenges and successes. When you compare yourself, you're placing your life in a distorted mirror. That mirror doesn't reflect who you really are, but instead, an idealized and superficial version of someone else. This creates a constant feeling of inadequacy, like you're never enough. But the truth is that this comparison isn't fair to you or the other person. You're comparing your behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. Seneca, the great Stoic philosopher, reminds us, it's not fortune but life itself that should be compared. And in life, no one is superior to another. Everyone has their own journey, their own circumstances. When we forget this, we trap ourselves in a cycle of chasing something we'll never achieve, being someone else. Social media amplifies this cycle of comparison. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, they're all filled with perfect lives that are often nothing more than a curated selection of the best moments but our brains can't tell the difference between what's real and what's staged. When you see photos of exotic vacations, sculpted bodies, professional achievements, you start to ask yourself, why don't I have that? Why doesn't my life look that amazing? This feeling is dangerous because it triggers automatic thoughts of inadequacy. You see a picture and instantly start judging yourself. It's as if you're in an invisible competition where the prize is being better than others, but the rules are never clear. And what happens is that you start losing, not because you're not capable, but because you're playing a game that has no winner. This feeling of inadequacy is a form of self-sabotage. It creates invisible but deep barriers. You begin to believe that you'll never be good enough, and this chips away at your confidence. Doubt settles in. Why do I never feel like I measure up? What's wrong with me? But there's nothing wrong with you. The problem lies in measuring your worth based on unrealistic and often unattainable standards. Even Marcus Aurelius in his reflections reminds us, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. In other words, focus on who you are becoming, not on how you compare to others. Social media is an illusion that tries to convince you that your worth is determined by how much you display. 
But true confidence doesn't come from external approval. It's born from internal respect. Why do I never feel good enough? This is a question that may echo often in the minds of those who constantly compare themselves to others. The feeling of not being good enough arises when the reference for success or happiness is always outside of us. If you evaluate yourself solely based on what others are doing or achieving, you'll always be in a lower position because their reality is not yours. The key to changing this perspective is understanding that everyone has their own unique path. What you see as success in another person may not make sense or hold the same value for you. What brings you happiness might be different from what brings happiness to someone else. But when you ignore these differences and try to mold your life based on someone else's patterns, the inevitable result is frustration. The problem with comparison is that it never shows the full picture. You see the success, but you don't see the sacrifice. You see the happiness, but you don't know the internal battles. By comparing your life to someone else's, you're comparing the whole with only a part. And of course, that distorts reality. The question, why do I never feel good enough, should be transformed into, what is my own path, and how can I be the best version of myself? Stoic principle. Focus on what you can control. This is where Stoicism comes in with a powerful lesson. Focus only on what you can control. Comparing yourself to others is outside of your control. You can't change someone else's success, another person's achievements, their body, or the happiness you see in their life. But you can change how you react to all of this. You can, and should, focus on what's under your control, your actions, thoughts, and progress. Epictetus teaches us, it's not the things themselves that disturb us, but our interpretation of things. When you interpret someone else's success as your own failure, you're creating a destructive narrative. However, if you change your interpretation and focus on your own progress, on your own journey, you'll begin to build a confidence that's based on who you truly are, not on what others seem to be. A simple analogy for this is a race. Imagine you're running on a track. If you spend the entire race looking to the side to see how the other runners are doing, you'll lose your rhythm, your focus, and inevitably, the race. But if you focus on your own path, on your breathing, on the beat of your feet on the ground, you'll be doing what you can control. And in doing so, your performance will be the best it can be. Stoicism teaches us to let go of what we can't change and to focus our energy on what we can improve in ourselves. By stopping the comparison with others and focusing on your own progress, you'll start to feel an inner peace that comes from being in control of what truly matters, yourself. Constant comparison with others is a slow but lethal poison for our confidence. It puts us in a cycle of dissatisfaction where we're never good enough. Social media amplifies this, making us believe our lives are less valuable because they don't look like someone else's. But stoicism offers a way out. Focus on what you can control. You can't control someone else's achievements or the unrealistic standards that social media imposes. But you can control how you react to it. You can choose to focus on your own progress, on your own achievements, and let go of the comparison that only brings frustration. As Epictetus taught us, the power lies in how we interpret things. And by changing your interpretation, you can transform your life and rebuild your confidence from the inside out. By focusing on yourself, you'll find something much more valuable than any external validation, the peace of being who you truly are. Third habit, destructive self-criticism. At first glance, it may seem like a valuable ally. After all, it often arises with the intention of improving, correcting mistakes, and steering us in the right direction. But when that self-criticism becomes destructive, it quickly turns into an obstacle an obstacle that holds us back from growing and traps us in a cycle of insecurity and lack of confidence. Negative self-talk acts like a dark cloud hanging over you, obscuring your view of who you truly are. It's that voice that whispers or sometimes even shouts that you're not good enough, that no matter what you do, it will never be enough. This kind of constant criticism 
gradually erodes your self-esteem until you start believing those thoughts are true. Think of a balloon filled with air. It starts out full and floating high, but with each little prick of self-criticism, it loses some air. At first, you hardly notice, but over time, the once full and light balloon deflates completely and starts to fall. Your confidence is much the same. Each negative thought, every I can't, I'm not capable, or I'm not good enough, chips away at your self-esteem until you feel empty. This excessive self-criticism doesn't come out of nowhere. It may stem from unrealistic expectations, perfectionism, or even past experiences that left deep scars. But when we let those voices take over our thoughts, we create a destructive cycle. The more you criticize yourself, the more insecure you feel. And the more insecure you feel, the more you criticize yourself. And so, your confidence is worn down bit by bit. Epictetus, one of the great Stoic philosophers, said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. In other words, it's not reality that often hurts us, but how we interpret it. If you constantly view yourself negatively, interpreting every mistake as proof of your inadequacy, your confidence has no chance of surviving that constant assault. How to identify and challenge your negative thoughts. The first step to breaking this cycle of destructive self-criticism is recognizing that it exists. This can be harder than it seems because these thoughts often arise automatically. They disguise themselves as absolute truths when in reality they are just opinions, harsh and unfair opinions, often shaped by years of insecurity or external criticism. Have you ever caught yourself thinking, why do I always feel like I'm not good enough? This type of thought sneaks in silently. A small mistake at work, a criticism from someone, or even a failure in a personal project, and soon your mind begins constructing a narrative of inadequacy. This thought pattern, if left unchallenged, starts to govern your emotions and, eventually, your life. Identifying these negative thoughts is the first step to combating them. Think of it as catching a thief in the act. You need to stay alert and recognize when that critical voice emerges, because it's sneaky. Once you recognize the negative thought, the next step is to question it. Ask yourself, is this criticism fair? Am I being too hard on myself? How would I treat a friend if they were in the same situation? This simple shift in perspective can be transformative. When you start questioning the validity of your self-destructive thoughts, you begin a healing process. It's like opening a window in a dark room. Suddenly, light floods in, and you start to see things differently. Seneca, in his letters, talks about the importance of being moderate in our opinions, including about ourselves. He said, Believe in those who are willing to criticize you, but believe even more in those who encourage you. This shows us that self-criticism only has value when it leads to growth, not destruction. The real path to progress combines constructive criticism with self-compassion. Adopt a stoic perspective. Embrace your mistakes as lessons. Mistakes are inevitable. We all make them, big and small. But what really matters is not the mistake itself, but how we respond to it. In Stoicism, mistakes are seen as a natural part of the journey, an opportunity for learning and growth. When you accept this, you stop viewing your mistakes as catastrophic failures and start seeing them as steps that move you forward. Imagine you're on a winding road. Each time you make a mistake, it's like taking a curve a little too sharply. However, by learning from those curves, you become a more skilled driver, more capable of handling the challenges ahead. Mistakes aren't detours, they're an integral part of the path. Marcus Aurelius in his meditations offers a profound reflection on this. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to love, to learn. This perspective reminds us that life, with its ups and downs, its mistakes and achievements, is a gift. By accepting our mistakes as opportunities for learning, we adopt a more compassionate attitude towards ourselves. Practicing self-compassion means understanding that you don't have to be perfect. Nobody is. 
and when you fail or make mistakes, you're not straying from your path, but rather walking it in a genuine way. Stoic acceptance teaches us that we can't control everything. We can't turn back time to correct our mistakes, but we can control how we react to them. And by reacting with compassion, you give yourself the chance to grow. Negative self-talk is an invisible but powerful enemy. It creeps into your thoughts, destroys your confidence, and creates a narrative of inadequacy. But you don't have to accept that narrative as truth. By identifying those thoughts, challenging them, and adopting a stoic perspective, you can transform the way you see yourself. By practicing self-compassion, you recognize that mistakes are part of the journey. They don't define who you are, but rather what you're learning. As Marcus Aurelius and Seneca remind us, true wisdom comes from accepting life with all its imperfections, including our own. So the next time you find yourself caught in a cycle of destructive self-criticism, stop and ask yourself, am I being fair to myself? In doing so, you create space for growth, learning, and most importantly, the rebuilding of your confidence. Fourth habit, lack of self-discipline. Without a doubt, one of the pillars of confidence. When self-discipline is lacking, it's as if you're constantly sabotaging yourself, breaking promises, and creating a sense of failure that can slowly erode your confidence. This is because the relationship between discipline and confidence goes far beyond simply completing a task or reaching a goal. It's about the relationship you build with yourself, the commitment you make to your own progress. Let's think of self-discipline as a bridge you construct between your goals and achieving them. Every time you keep your word, following through on something you promised yourself, you're reinforcing that bridge, making it stronger and more capable of withstanding challenges. However, when you break your promises or give up halfway, it's like removing bricks from that bridge, and eventually, it collapses. For example, when you decide to start a new habit, whether it's working out, reading more, or meditating, that decision is a commitment to yourself. But if, at the first sign of difficulty, you decide to put it off or convince yourself that I'll start tomorrow, you weaken that internal trust. Every broken promise is a signal to your mind that maybe you're not as reliable as you thought, and that perception undermines your self-confidence. It's worth recalling the words of Epictetus, who said, first tell yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. In other words, Building confidence comes from action, from the discipline of staying true to what you said you would be. When you do what needs to be done, even when it's hard, that action reinforces your confidence, and this creates a positive cycle. The more you act in a disciplined way, the more confident you become in your ability to achieve what you've set out to do. Why is it so hard to stay consistent? Now, if we know that self-discipline is so important, why is it so hard to maintain? Why, even with the best intentions, do we often give up on our goals? This is a question that deeply resonates with many of us. Part of the answer lies in the fact that our minds tend to avoid discomfort. Self-discipline, by its nature, requires effort, consistency, and often, sacrifice. This can be uncomfortable, especially when results don't show up immediately. The mind, then, starts looking for shortcuts, excuses, and ways to divert us from the path. You start thinking, oh, I'll just skip today, or I really deserve a break. And before you know it, these thoughts become a pattern. Another factor is the high expectations we place on ourselves. Many times, when we set a new goal, we want changes to happen fast and be noticeable. However, most meaningful results in life don't happen overnight. If you start a new workout routine, for example, you may not see major changes in your body in the first few weeks, and this can be demotivating. The lack of immediate results makes you question, why am I doing this if nothing is changing? And that's when many people quit. Here, the Stoic perspective offers valuable insight. Seneca reminds us to hasten slowly, meaning that real progress comes from consistent steps, not giant leaps. Consistency, even in small efforts, is what leads us to our desired destination. And it's this consistency that becomes the challenge. How can we strengthen our self-discipline and, in turn, our confidence? Stoicism offers us a key principle, the focus on steady progress. 
Instead of pouring all your energy into making big, sudden changes, the key lies in setting simple, sustainable routines. Think of it like planting a tree. If you expect the tree to grow overnight, you'll get frustrated. But if you tend to it every day, watering it, giving it sunlight and space to grow, over time, it will become strong and resilient. The same goes for self-discipline. Establishing a small routine, something you can consistently stick to, is far more effective than trying to change everything all at once. One way to apply this in practice is to start small. If you want to read more, don't set grand goals like reading a book a week. Instead, commit to reading for 10 minutes a day. Does that seem small? Maybe. But the consistency of that habit, day after day, will create a solid foundation. And over time, the habit will strengthen and become something natural. Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, offers us practical wisdom. If it is bearable, then bear it. Stop complaining. This phrase may seem simple, but it holds great power when it comes to self-discipline. Often, the difficulty in maintaining discipline comes from our tendency to complain or focus on the hardships rather than simply doing what needs to be done. By adopting a mindset of action without dwelling on the difficulties or internal resistance, you start moving toward your goal more efficiently. Another useful practice is to visualize progress. In Stoicism, it's common to reflect on what has been accomplished and how each small step brings us closer to our larger purpose. At the end of each week, or even each day, ask yourself, what did I do today that brought me closer to my goals? Even if it was a small step, this reflection gives you a sense of accomplishment and reinforces your confidence in your ability to stay disciplined. Self-discipline isn't just about meeting goals or completing tasks. It directly impacts how you see yourself and the confidence you have in yourself. Every time you break a promise to yourself, you weaken that relationship of trust. However, by practicing self-discipline consistently, even in small steps, you begin to rebuild that bridge between your intentions and your actions. Remember, discipline isn't about perfection, it's about consistency. By focusing on steady progress rather than immediate results, you create a solid foundation for your confidence and future success. And above all, the discipline you practice today is a reflection of the confidence you'll cultivate tomorrow. As Epictetus teaches us, happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control and others are not. Steady progress is within our control and this is the principle we must follow. Fifth habit, excessive fear of failure. It's like an invisible shadow silently following us, limiting our movements and restricting our choices. It shows up during crucial moments when you're faced with a new opportunity or a big challenge. Deep down, we know that taking risks is necessary for growth, but that constant fear of messing up ends up paralyzing us. And the more you give into it, the more your confidence erodes. Fear of failure doesn't just stop us from acting. It also drains our energy. It's like standing in front of a door, knowing it could lead to something better, but fear keeps you frozen, unable to turn the handle. Over time, this paralysis takes root in your mind, and little by little, you start to believe you might not be capable of doing anything that really matters. Every time you decide not to try something out of fear of failing, you're training your brain to avoid discomfort instead of facing it. Failure turns into this invisible monster you'll do anything to avoid, and this constant attempt to dodge failure only deepens your insecurity. It's like walking through a minefield where every step feels too risky and the only solution seems to be standing still. The thing is, by choosing not to try, you're cutting yourself off from any chance of success. Fear of messing up creates a mental prison, keeping you from discovering what you're really capable of. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher emperor said, the obstacle to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. This quote reminds us that fear shouldn't be a roadblock, but a guide. Fear of failure shows us that we're standing in front of something important, something with the potential to transform us. Common doubts. What if I fail again? This is a question that often haunts the minds of people who've experienced failure. The fear of making a mistake once is strong, but the fear of repeating it can be even more paralyzing. What if I mess up again? 
is a question that carries a lot of weight, usually accompanied by another one. What will people think? When you experience failure, the memory of that event becomes vivid, almost like a mental scar. And the more you hold on to that scar, the more it defines you. But in reality, failure is just part of being human. We've all at some point experienced the pain of not reaching a goal, of not living up to expectations. But we must remember that failure isn't the end of the road. It's part of the growth process. Imagine a baby learning to walk. They fall countless times before they manage to take their first steps on their own. If that baby gave up after the first fall, they'd never learn to walk. The same goes for us adults. We fall, we make mistakes, we fail. It's inevitable. What sets those who grow apart from those who stay stuck is how they deal with those falls. Stoicism teaches us that failure is inevitable, but it's also temporary. Epictetus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Failure only has the power to bring you down if you let it. And if you allow failure to convince you that you're not good enough, that fear will keep growing. But what if, instead of fearing failure, you embraced it as part of your journey? What if, instead of asking, what if I fail again? Shifting your perspective is a crucial step in overcoming this fear. In Stoicism, failure is seen as an opportunity, not an end. It's a valuable tool to help us adjust our strategies and strengthen our resilience. Seneca, one of the great Stoic masters, reminds us, a man who has faced setbacks has a chance to find himself. In other words, it's in times of difficulty that we discover our true strength. Accepting failure as part of growth is liberating. When you realize that making mistakes is just part of the process, fear of failure starts to lose its grip. Of course, that doesn't mean you'll stop feeling uncomfortable with the idea of messing up. The discomfort will always be there, but it doesn't have to paralyze you. It can, in fact, be the push you need to try again. Imagine you're climbing a mountain. Every step you take carries the risk of slipping and falling, but each fall is an opportunity to learn where to step next. If you decide to give up after the first fall, you'll never make it to the top. But if you embrace the process, falls and all, you'll end up climbing higher and higher. Embrace uncertainty. The future is always uncertain and trying to control it only heightens anxiety. But when you accept that failure is a possibility and decide to move forward despite that, you regain control over your actions. Zeno of Sidium, the founder of Stoicism said, well-being is not in avoiding danger, but in facing it. That's the essence of Stoic philosophy. Not avoiding failure, but facing it with courage and using its lessons to grow. Fear of failure is a powerful force, but it doesn't have to be an insurmountable obstacle. It can be a guide, pointing you toward the areas of your life where growth is most needed. Far from being a final sentence, failure is an opportunity to learn and evolve. Stoicism teaches us that by accepting this reality, we can turn our setbacks into stepping stones for success. So the next time you feel paralyzed by fear of messing up, Remember the words of Marcus Aurelius. The mind adapts and converts to its own purposes the obstacle to our acting. What's keeping you from acting is exactly what you need to face in order to grow. Failure isn't an end, but a beginning. A chance to adjust your course and move forward with greater strength and wisdom. By embracing uncertainty and seeing failures as lessons, you'll be building a confidence not based on the illusion of perfection, but on the resilience of someone who knows that making mistakes is part of the process. After all, true confidence doesn't come from a lack of failures, but from the courage to keep going, regardless of them. Sixth habit, surrounding yourself with negative people. Surrounding yourself with negative people is like living in a place where the air is constantly polluted. Over time, you start to feel the effects, even if you don't notice it right away. These people can drain your energy, chip away at your confidence, and in the end, leave you doubting yourself. Being in an environment dominated by negativity can have a devastating impact, and recognizing this is the first step to protecting your self-esteem and peace of mind. Imagine you're in a garden. The plants around you are growing strong and healthy, flourishing with each passing day. But if you let weeds take over, they'll start choking the plants, stealing the nutrients and sunlight they need to keep growing. Negative people are like those weeds. 
they suck the energy out of you, your vitality, and before you know it, they're impacting your self-confidence. Negativity has a way of seeping into your mind like poison. When you're constantly around people who complain, criticize, or doubt everything and everyone, it starts to affect the way you see yourself. If these people keep telling you your ideas are impractical, your dreams unreachable, or that you're not capable of achieving what you want, over time, you might start to believe it. This subtle ongoing influence can eat away at your confidence. Doubt creeps in, and suddenly, you find yourself hesitating to make decisions or pursue what you truly want. The external voices start to echo in your head until you can't tell your own thoughts from the criticism you've heard. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, the person who tries to please everyone is unable to live in harmony with themselves. When you're constantly bombarded by criticism and negativity, your ability to maintain inner harmony is compromised. How to identify who's undermining your confidence. It's not always easy to realize when someone is undermining your confidence. Often, these people are part of your inner circle, friends, family, or co-workers. They may not be openly malicious, but their words and actions, repeated over time, weaken your self-esteem. So, how do you identify who's doing this? One clear sign is how you feel around these people. If after spending time with them you feel drained, discouraged, or insecure, it could be a sign that something's off. Ask yourself, why do I feel so bad around certain people? You might notice they always have something negative to say, never acknowledge your accomplishments, or make you feel small in the face of your ambitions. Another sign is when you start doubting yourself more than usual. If you used to feel confident in your abilities, but after interacting with certain people, you start questioning your decisions. This could be a reflection of their influence. These people may not be directly attacking you, but their constant comments about how hard things are, how pointless efforts can be, or how broken the system is begin to affect your mindset. Beware of those who disguise themselves as realists. Many claim to just be realistic, but what they're really doing is projecting their own limitations and fears onto you. Seneca teaches us that the man who suffers before it is necessary suffers more than is necessary. Surrounding yourself with people who live in constant pessimism is like suffering before the time comes, carrying a weight that shouldn't be yours. The Stoics emphasize the importance of choosing wisely who you spend your time with. Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, wrote, Avoid those who do not contribute to your well-being. Wherever you go, carry virtue as your guide. This means that, to maintain your peace and strengthen your confidence, it's essential to limit the influence of people who drag you down. Choosing who you spend your time with isn't just a matter of comfort. It's also an act of self-care. Think of your mind as a glass of clear water. If you constantly allow negative people to dump their impurities into that glass, the water will inevitably become cloudy. To keep your clarity, you need to surround yourself with people who bring light and encouragement, rather than criticism and negativity. Setting clear boundaries. The solution lies in setting clear boundaries. This doesn't mean you have to cut every person out of your life who's occasionally negative. After all, nobody's perfect and we all have our weak moments. However, you need to be aware of who is consistently undermining your confidence. These are the relationships that need boundaries. It's not selfish to distance yourself from toxic environments. It's a necessary choice to preserve your mental and emotional well-being. Besides limiting negative influences, it's crucial to surround yourself with people who lift you up. People who believe in your potential, who inspire you, and who are honest with you but in a constructive way. This type of company not only strengthens your confidence but also helps you grow. Just as a plant needs sunlight to thrive, you need people around you who are sources of encouragement, support, and positivity. Surrounding yourself with negative people is one of the biggest challenges in maintaining confidence. The impact these people have on your self-esteem can be devastating, creating an environment where doubt and insecurity reign. Identifying these negative influences is crucial to protecting your mind and heart. By recognizing how you feel around certain people and how much their attitudes affect your self-view, you start to take control of your confidence. 
Stoicism teaches us to choose wisely who we spend our time with, Limiting the influence of those who drag you down and surrounding yourself with people who uplift you is an act of self-love and respect. Just as a plant needs a healthy environment to grow, you need an environment of encouragement and positivity to thrive in your true potential. So take a moment to reflect on who's around you. Evaluate the relationships that strengthen your confidence and those that undermine it. And remember Marcus Aurelius's words, Avoid those who do not contribute to your well-being. Protecting your confidence is protecting your essence, and it starts with the conscious choice of who you allow into your life. Seventh habit, paralyzing perfectionism. It's a trap disguised as ambition. It makes us believe we're striving for the best, that we'll only accept perfect, but in reality, it can keep us stuck. This constant pursuit of perfection leads to a silent frustration that slowly erodes our confidence. If nothing you do ever seems good enough, how can you trust yourself? Perfectionism, rather than being a driving force for success, often becomes an obstacle that paralyzes us. At first, perfectionism might seem like a positive trait. After all, wanting to do things well and aiming for the best in yourself is commendable. However, the problem arises when that pursuit for the best turns into an endless quest for perfection. Perfectionism is ruthless. It's never satisfied. Even if you've worked hard on something, there's always a detail that could be better, a small flaw that keeps you from feeling completely happy with the result. This mindset creates a cycle of self-sabotage. Every time you dedicate yourself to a task and don't see it as perfect, you feel like you've failed. And with each failure, your confidence takes another hit. It's like trying to fill a bucket with a hole in the bottom. No matter how much you try, it never seems enough. Perfectionism tricks us into believing that if it's not perfect, it's worthless. Seneca in his letters said, while you're delaying what's possible, life passes by. He warns us about the dangers of chasing the unattainable. If we're always waiting for the perfect moment or performance, we stop living in the present and miss out on the small successes we achieve along the way. Confidence grows from these small steps, from those imperfect but valuable achievements. One of the subtler effects of perfectionism is procrastination. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you delay starting a task because you're afraid you won't do it perfectly? Or maybe you start something, but never finish it because there's always something to tweak or improve? That's perfectionism in action. Procrastination comes from the fear of not living up to expectations, your own expectations. It's like constantly having the parking brake on while trying to move forward. Why does this happen? Because perfectionism creates the illusion that if you can't do everything flawlessly, it's better not to try at all. This fear of failure, of not being good enough, stops us from taking action and keeps us stuck in a cycle of inaction. Have you ever asked yourself, why can't I ever finish something, no matter how hard I try? The answer lies in perfectionism. When we're seeking perfection, the work never feels complete. There's always an improvement to be made, a detail to fix. And so, you find yourself trapped, unable to move forward, simply because you never think what you've done is good enough. This connection between perfectionism and procrastination is one of the most destructive forms of self-sabotage. You want to move forward, you want to make things happen, but the fear of not being perfect stops you from even starting or finishing what you began. Marcus Aurelius, in his reflections, reminds us, do not let the future disturb you. You will meet it if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. What he teaches us is that by worrying too much about a perfect result in the future, we lose the ability to act in the present. Stoic practice. Accept good enough and keep evolving. Here, Stoicism offers a valuable solution. Progress is more important than perfection. Accepting that good enough is often the best we can do in many moments frees us from the paralysis of perfectionism. The Stoics teach us that perfection is not within human control. What's within our power is the effort, the commitment to give our best every day and to learn from our experiences even when the results aren't perfect. Stoic philosophy encourages us to accept imperfection as a natural part of life. Epictetus reminds us, do you want to be invincible? 
then don't enter into competition with things outside your control. Perfectionism often makes us fight against things we can't control, like external approval or the absence of mistakes. But when we accept that making mistakes is part of the growth process, the pressure eases. The key to overcoming perfectionism is shifting your focus. Instead of fixating on the final result, focus on progress. Every little step counts. If you wait for perfection, you'll always be frustrated. But if you start valuing progress, you'll always be moving forward, always growing. Think of the process like climbing a mountain. If you're obsessed with reaching the top quickly, you might feel overwhelmed by the distance left to cover. But if you celebrate each small step, you'll see that you're steadily making your way up. Constant progress is the true measure of success, not perfection. A painter, for example, rarely considers a piece completely perfect. At some point, they decide it's good enough to stop, and that's when the work is ready to be shared. Similarly, in life, we must know when something is good enough to move forward. Getting stuck in the idea that something can always be infinitely improved only keeps us from progressing. Perfectionism, though it may seem like a noble pursuit, often becomes a trap that erodes our confidence and paralyzes us. The belief that only the perfect is acceptable prevents us from recognizing the value of our efforts, of our daily small victories. Perfectionism creates a cycle of frustration and procrastination where we never feel satisfied and never believe we're measuring up. Stoic practice offers us a way out of this vicious cycle by accepting that good enough is enough and focusing on progress instead of perfection, you free yourself from the chains of self-sabotage. Progress is where growth lies, and every step forward, no matter how small, is an achievement worth celebrating. Remember Seneca's words, it is part of the cure to wish to be healed. Accepting that perfection is unattainable and that making mistakes is part of the process is the first step toward healing from perfectionism. By embracing imperfection and valuing progress, you not only strengthen your confidence, but also allow your life to flow more lightly and satisfyingly. Eighth habit, lack of self-acceptance. Lack of self-acceptance is like carrying the weight of a constant inner battle. You look in the mirror, but you don't fully recognize yourself. There's always something that seems off, out of place, and that feeling of inadequacy slowly chips away at your confidence. Accepting who you really are might sound simple in theory, but in practice, it's a daily challenge, especially in a world that often pressures us to be something we're not. Fighting against your own essence is a losing battle. When you try to be something that doesn't align with your true nature, you end up distancing yourself from who you really are. And in that process, your confidence starts to crumble. Every time you reject parts of yourself, whether it's your appearance, your skills, or even your personality, you're reinforcing the idea that, somehow, you're not good enough. This creates an internal disconnect. Imagine trying to run a marathon with one leg tied. Every step is a monumental effort, and with each passing moment, you feel further from the finish line. That's what it feels like to live without self-acceptance. It's like constantly sabotaging yourself without realizing that this inner struggle is draining your energy. This disconnect often has deep roots. Many times it comes from comparing ourselves to others or from setting unrealistic expectations for ourselves. The modern world, with its social media and success standards, bombards us with messages about who we should be, and in trying to meet these expectations, we lose ourselves. Epictetus, one of the great Stoic masters said, don't seek to be what you are not, accept what you are. This is the key to breaking free from the prison of non-acceptance recognizing and embracing your true self. The culture of perfection surrounds us in an invisible but powerful way. Everywhere we look, we're bombarded with images and messages that seem to tell us that being normal isn't enough. The perfect body, the perfect career, the perfect social life. These are the standards we're often pressured to meet. But the problem with chasing perfection is that it's unattainable. And when you compare yourself to these ideals, the feeling of inadequacy settles in. Have you ever wondered, why do I feel inadequate even though I'm being myself? It's a question that echoes in the minds of many. Even when we're doing our best, 
walking our own path, there are moments when comparing ourselves to others makes us feel less than. And it's painful because you start to question whether you're doing enough, whether you are enough. The reality is that the perfection we see on social media or in magazines isn't real. These are carefully edited images, selected moments that don't reflect life as it truly is. The problem is, by chasing this perfection, you lose touch with your own reality. You start seeing yourself through a filter of constant dissatisfaction, which only deepens the lack of acceptance. Marcus Aurelius in his meditations reminds us, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. When we let go of the idea that we need to conform to external standards, we begin to find strength in our own uniqueness. The Stoics understood that human nature is imperfect, and fighting against this reality is futile. Stoic philosophy teaches us to embrace our flaws, our mistakes, and even our moments of weakness. Because in the end, it's these imperfections that make us human. When you accept your imperfections, you start to see the world more clearly, and that acceptance opens the door to a kind of confidence that doesn't rely on external validation. The practice of Stoic self-acceptance is, above all, an exercise in compassion for yourself. By recognizing that you are a constantly evolving being, that mistakes and errors are inevitable along the way, you begin to treat yourself with more kindness. Instead of punishing yourself for every mistake, you learn to see these moments as part of the growth process. Zeno of Sidium, the founder of Stoicism, said, happiness is a good flow of life. This means that true happiness doesn't come from being perfect or fitting into unrealistic standards, but from living in harmony with who you are. And living in harmony with yourself starts with accepting both your limitations and your strengths. When you accept yourself, you stop wasting energy trying to be something you're not, and you start channeling that energy into growing authentically. Self-acceptance doesn't mean complacency. It doesn't mean you should stop striving to improve or aiming for greater things. What it means is that you start working with what you've got, acknowledging your limitations without letting them define you. It's the understanding that progress is more valuable than perfection and that personal growth happens when you stop fighting against yourself and start working for yourself. Lack of self-acceptance is one of the deepest causes of low confidence. When you're constantly at war with your own essence, you lose sight of the value you have. This inner struggle, often fueled by the culture of perfection around us, slowly erodes your self-esteem. However, by adopting a stoic mindset of acceptance, you can begin to reverse this process. Accepting yourself isn't a sign of weakness, but of strength. It's recognizing that you are imperfect, but that these imperfections don't diminish your value. By practicing self-acceptance, you free yourself from the unrealistic expectations the world tries to impose and start finding true confidence, the kind that comes from within. As the Stoics teach us, true wisdom lies in living according to our nature, not in trying to be something we're not. And when you allow yourself to live in harmony with who you are, you begin to find a peace that doesn't rely on perfection, but on authenticity. In this way, self-acceptance becomes not only a path to strengthening your confidence, but also a key to living a fuller, more meaningful life. Ninth Habit – Avoiding New Challenges Avoiding new challenges might seem like a safe choice, but over time, it becomes an invisible prison. By staying in your comfort zone, you protect yourself from the unknown and discomfort, but you also prevent growth. The impact of this on your confidence is profound. Without facing the new, without testing your capabilities in challenging situations, your confidence becomes fragile, limited by what you already know and what you think you're capable of. The result? A life of stagnation and insecurity. The comfort zone, as the name suggests, is comfortable. It's a familiar space where you know what to expect and what you can control. However, the longer you stay in it, the more you begin to miss the opportunity to push your limits and, consequently, your confidence. It's like living in a small room where you know every corner and every piece of furniture. But by avoiding opening the door to the hallway that leads to the unknown, you never discover what else is out there. Every time you avoid a challenge, you're essentially telling yourself, 
I can't do it. Even if that's not the conscious message, your brain internalizes this decision as confirmation that the risk is too great, that failure or discomfort are threats to be avoided at all costs. The problem is that this feeds a cycle of insecurity. The more you avoid, the less confidence you have in your ability to handle the unknown. Imagine you're in a boat drifting on a lake, the water is calm, and the boat feels safe. But in the distance, you see an ocean. That ocean represents the vast potential of your life, your untapped abilities. Yet, you choose to stay on the lake, afraid of the waves that might come in the ocean. By doing so, you never find out if you could have navigated those more challenging waters. And over time, the lake starts to feel smaller and more limiting. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, said, Life without challenges is a life without growth. By avoiding challenges, you're not only limiting your growth, but also sabotaging your confidence. Challenges are what help us discover strengths we didn't know we had. When you face something new and overcome it, even if you're scared, your confidence grows. But when you avoid these moments, the sense of incapability increases. Common question. How can I build confidence if I don't face new challenges? One question that often comes up is, how can I build confidence if I don't face new challenges? And it's a fair question because, without putting yourself to the test, confidence remains theoretical. It's like learning to swim by reading about it but never getting into the water. Real confidence comes when you push your own limits and discover that you are capable of more than you thought. However, the fear of change, failure, or discomfort can be so paralyzing that you don't even know where to start. This fear is completely normal. We all feel resistance to change, especially when it pulls us out of familiar territory. But it's important to question that fear. Why am I so afraid of change? Often, this fear is rooted in past experiences or a sense that the unknown is dangerous. But in reality, the unknown is where growth happens. What's interesting about facing challenges is that by doing so, you often discover the fear was bigger than the reality. Marcus Aurelius, in his Meditations, reflects on how we often suffer more in our imagination than in reality. He writes, If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. In other words, the fear we have of facing new challenges is often a creation of our minds, a form of protection that ends up limiting us. Confidence, then, isn't something you suddenly gain. It is built, little by little, each time you face a new challenge and overcome it. Even when you fail, you learn something about yourself, and that learning strengthens your confidence the next time. The process of building confidence is much more about action than about waiting to feel ready. The Stoics had a very clear view of how to face the unknown, with courage and acceptance. To them, the unknown was not something to fear, but rather an opportunity to practice virtue and self-control. Facing challenges was a way to strengthen character and discover more about oneself. Epictetus, another great Stoic master, said, What injures us is not what happens to us, but how we react to what happens to us. In other words, what matters is not the challenge itself, but how you choose to face it. Accepting challenges as opportunities for learning is a powerful shift in mindset. When you see a challenge as a chance to learn, rather than a threat to your security, the fear lessens. The focus shifts away from the final outcome, whether you will win or lose, and towards the process of growth. This is liberating because it allows you to fail without letting it crush your self-esteem. Imagine a traveler exploring a forest. He doesn't know what he'll encounter along the way, but with each new discovery, he learns more about the environment and himself. He might trip, fall, but he also finds landscapes he would have never seen had he stayed on the known path. The same is true for challenges. They push us to new places, helping us discover strengths we didn't know we had. For the Stoics, courage isn't the absence of fear, but the willingness to act despite fear. Facing challenges with this attitude of courage and acceptance makes us more resilient and confident. The challenge doesn't need to be enormous. Often, it's the small steps outside your comfort zone that build the greatest confidence. It's saying yes to a new opportunity, 
even when you don't know exactly how it will turn out. It's accepting that learning more than immediate success is the real goal. Avoiding new challenges might seem like the safer choice, but over time, this choice erodes your confidence. Without putting yourself to the test, without exploring the unknown, you remain confined by the boundaries of your comfort zone. And while you stay there, your confidence doesn't grow. Instead, it weakens. The question of how to build confidence without facing challenges is valid, but the answer lies in action. The fear of change, although natural, shouldn't be a roadblock. When you start seeing challenges as opportunities for learning, not threats to your worth, you free yourself from the chains of insecurity. Stoicism teaches us to face the unknown with courage and acceptance. No matter the outcome, what matters is how you handle the process. Each new challenge, each small step outside your comfort zone, strengthens your confidence and helps you discover new capabilities within yourself. After all, true confidence doesn't come from avoiding challenges, but from facing them with courage and a willingness to learn. Now, I want to hear from you. Which of these habits resonated with you the most? Procrastination? Comparing yourself to others? Fear of failure? Let me know in the comments which one impacts your life the most and what you're willing to do to overcome it. Sharing your experiences can inspire others who are going through the same challenges. Let's create a community of support and growth together. And of course, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to keep up with our videos on stoicism and personal development. Together, we can learn and apply stoic wisdom in our daily lives to become more confident, resilient, and balanced. See you in the next video. Big hug and stay with God.